Dr. Terry Ryan Kane is the owner of the innovative veterinary practice A2B Vet, which is devoted to protecting our pollinators, particularly our important food animals, the honeybees. Thanks so much for joining us again. Good we morning. visit again. Good morning. Um, we had such a great interview last time at WVC, and certainly a lot of people are very excited to hear what's next on WVC 2020 agenda for you. Well, we plan on having another bee lab, barring a snowstorm <laughs> again. Which, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds of that in Las Vegas? Yeah. I know. Yeah, and then we will have lectures again on honeybee biology, ecology, diseases, treatments, and we're trying to recruit as many veterinarians into honeybee medicine as we possibly can because honey or beekeepers and all, actually all pollinators, even our native bees, need help. They do. And there's never been a better time for veterinarians to get involved in pollinator health right now because many are endangered now and there are a lot of things that are working against our pollinators. Like what? Pesticides, habitat loss, management, loss of biodiversity, monocultures, there's all kinds of things. There's lots of research at, on, uh, in universities now on agroecology, new ways of doing agriculture so that we're using less pesticides, more natural ways, planting cover crops. There's a lot of innovation happening in agriculture right now to save pollinators which are obviously incredibly important to the health of our world in many ways. Unfortunately, they're also developing little drone pollinators. Oh, tell us more about that. Well, patents have already been filed by a number of places. And, uh, and there's places in China that have so few pollinators that they're using feathers to pollinate flowers. Wow. Yeah, so we really need to start looking at why bees and wasps and all kinds of insects have evolved over a hundred million years. There were bees when dinosaurs roamed the earth. And it's only been recently that we've been losing them. And, it, and it's our fault. We need to find ways to not use so many pesticides, increase biodiversity. Lots of steps lots there. Of, lots of steps there. Mm -hmm. So for the veterinarians that are attending WVC and are, their interest is really piqued by this bee lab, what specifically are they gonna learn there? Is this something that someone who has no knowledge can walk in and feel yes. okay foundationally? Yes, the one thing we wanna do with the bee labs, especially which we did here at the AVMA, like we do with any species, is learn handling. You wanna be comfortable around a horse, a pig, a cow. Mm -hmm. Same thing with bees. Bees are a little different because these are, could be stinging insects. And so we wear special equipment so we cover ourselves. Um, it's called personal protection equipment, PPEs. We learn biosecurity. We learn how to inspect a hive externally and internally. We learn the ecology around their foraging areas. And most importantly in the lectures, it's for veterinarians to learn that this is a one health issue. Mm -hmm. This involves everybody. If we want food, unless you wanna eat corn and soybeans, but if you want chocolate, blueberries, mangoes, pumpkins, squash, if you want all those foods that provide essential amino acids, minerals, and vitamins that the variety gives us, then we need pollinators. And it's not just those yummy foods, right? I mean, it's a lot of our bare bones, right? Milk and eggs, because we talked last time about what are our food animals eating, right? That's right. They're, our food animals are foraging on alfalfa and clover and such too. So if we want chickens and milk and eggs and all that. They need to be. But you know, we can survive without chickens and pigs and cows, but we can't survive without bees. And that's why I say there's never been a more important time for veterinarians to get involved because bees are really our most important food animal on the planet. And that really needs to be said. That really needs to be said. And that's why I say it's a one health issue. This is a global issue. It involves everybody. Yeah. So for the vets, I want to get back to the handling a little bit yeah. because just like bees are a hot topic, uh, thankfully low stress handling and changing the way we treat our companion and food animal and equine emotional health has been a big topic. Yeah. 
Do you think bees have emotional health? Is there a certain way that you handle your bees and teach people how to handle bees in that way? There's a couple things. We tell people if you're a cigarette smoker, or if you have alcohol on your breath, or if you have banana on your breath, bees don't like that. In fact, one guy told me the other day that he had had a beer before he went out to his hives, and his bees were really upset with him. Um, so one of the things we teach is don't wear fragrances, don't wear perfumes, hairspray, all those things, and zen it down. You need to be in a calm place. I, I equate it to horses. Horses, if you get on a horse, they can feel your nervousness and jump. And a lot of, um, I have a friend who teaches uh, GIs with PTSD beekeeping because we find that it really helps them learn to calm down. You have to be calm around the bees. Can't hurry. One of the things we teach in introductory bee lab is if you do get stung, don't start flailing your arms because that attracts the, the bees to you, the guard bees. Right. And there are pheromones released that the bees have that tells the other bees, not good. And one of the natural predators is bears. And so we tell people, don't wear a big black outfit out there because they see that and could go for you. So there's lots of little tidbits. And use your back. Don't use your back. I mean, use your knees and bend over and pick things up. These hives can weigh 40 to 60 pounds once they're full of honey. And on that note of the hives, I was fascinated last time to hear about all of the urban hives that are on rooftops today. New York City has 1,000 registered hives in the city. That's incredible. Right. So most cities now, Chicago, um, Boston, all have a lot of restaurants advertise that they use their own honey. And uh, yeah, they're very popular. And you also mentioned veterinary technicians, right? Because there's techs that are needed in all aspects of the industry. Where do they fit into the bees? Well, I, it, it's a good idea when you go out into a bee yard, especially if you're not used to bees, to know what your own sensitivity is to a bee. If you know you're allergic to bee stings, then you, this might not be a field that you want to go into. Or you need to carry an EpiPen with you. But certainly if you have a technician, and the technicians don't know, the veterinarian is responsible for the technician's well-being too. So I always carry Benadryl and Epi with me, just if I have people help me. But absolutely, there's a role for technicians. Just like in any veterinary field, we need technicians in this field. And what does a practicing bee veterinarian do at a hive. I know you mentioned briefly about your lectures, but if you were going to visit a hive and assess its health, can you tell me what you're checking for? Mm -hmm. We're checking for the health of the hive. You can, when you open up a hive, well, first of all, you're gonna look at the activity around the hive and the food supply. Two things are most important with bees. Nutrition, number one. So these are flower feeders, so the flowers attract pollinators to them with honey. The reward is nectar. And then the reward for the flower is the pollen sticks to the bee. When the bee travels to another mm -hmm. plant, it pollinates. But the nectar is the big attraction. Look for dead bees. Look for injured bees. Oftentimes, if there's been a pesticide exposure, the bee not might not be dead, but these are neurotoxins. And so if you see a, f a bee flailing about, mm -hmm there's some injury. Then when you open the hive, the first thing you check for is the odor. A healthy hive has kind of a sweet honey aroma to it, always pleasant. And if you smell something bad, it could be something as simple as a dead mouse down. Oh yeah, the mice get in there too. Or it could be moth or beetle infestation. And then the worst thing, uh, case scenario, would be a bacterial infection or virus. And these are carried by varroa mites. And so we encourage every beekeeper to always check for mites and use integrated pest management to manage their, the pests on there. Nice. Varroa is probably the number one killer of bees. Nutrition and, and varroa, those are the two things. Well, I personally can't wait to be part of the Bee Lab this year. I was so sad with the snow, and I can't wait to be there. Yes, all <laughs> fingers and toes crossed. No snow this No year. snow. Thank you, as always. You're always such a great conversationalist and such a wealth of knowledge. We really appreciate your time. See you in Las Vegas. See you there. <laughs>